What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the Golden Gopher Dynasty. Injuries or not, it is time to win the axe back from the University of Wisconsin. And it's not going to be easy. We're going to get to check in on Tanner Moore. Going to be a game time decision here. But this is a big game. If we win this game, we'll very likely crack ourselves into the top 20, which is very good considering our starting quarterback and running back missed a big chunk of the season. And Tanner Morgan is questionable here with the turf, though. We're going to have him show some toughness and come in and play this game against the Badgers. So a huge storyline here for Tanner Morgan against the hated rival Wisconsin. Please do hit that like button, guys. Really helps support the series if you're enjoying. And Morgan, his first throw of the season is going to hit Paulson on the move. Didn't look injured on that play. Playing on that turf toe. What a play. Good to have you back, Tanner. Can Potts get the edge? No. Negative two-yard rush for Trayson Potts. Going to set up second and 12. Yeah, nowhere to go with the football. Good pressure from Wisconsin. That's going to bring us to third and 20. Again, guys, we're only playing uh, three drives here, so we got to make our stamp. Uh, right now, this play is a big one. Oh, and Morgan misses the in route. Might have been there to set up third and manageable, but we are going to have to punt and lose out on our first opportunity here. And the defense is going to surrender a massive Touchdown drive. Looked like a 20-play drive there. Typical Wisconsin fashion, marching down. Let's see what the computer can do for us on offense. A nice drive for us is going to result in a touchdown. Good job, Morgan. Way to respond. Let's trust the defense again. There's an interception return for a, return for a touchdown. Jack Cohn throwing the pick. Love it. All right, a good turnaround here, but the defense is going to hold. So let's trust the offense again. And it's another great touchdown drive. All right, way to respond, Minnesota. But the defense driving, they're going to go for it on fourth down and not get it. Let's hop in here and play with the two-minute drill. Hopefully we can come in and put this game in, in pretty much out of reach here heading into halftime. If we can get a touchdown before half... Get rid of that, Morgan. Almost fumbled it. Man, blown up on the draw call. It's going to bring us to third and 11. Not looking good for our own appearances. At least the team is showing up without us. Wisconsin is going to take that timeout, try to get this ball back. Not going to be shy here. We trust our unit. Blitz coming from the left. Looking for the out route, and luckily, the corner can't get his feet in. We're going to have to punt this thing away. Hopefully, the defense can hold. And they give up a quick touchdown. And then we go score quickly. Wow, two scores inside about a minute and a half there. Interesting. All right, let's go to the third quarter. I'm going to skip ahead here, see if there's any fourth quarter opportunities to make a stand here. But the Gophers are really kicking ass here, taking over the game. A blowout in rhythm here against Wisconsin. So Wisconsin kind of laying a stinker this week. Not looking like a top 10 team at all. Just going to take over, see what we can get done. Blitz is on. Bateman holds on to it. Good job, Bateman. First and goal. Just get rid of it. What a day for Tanner Morgan coming back. Throws for 500 yards, four touchdowns. Unbelievable. Turf toe can't keep him down. Way to show some toughness. Potts. Good run. 
Third and goal, slant. Chris Ottman Bell, touchdown. Wow, a convincing win for the Gophers. Talk about setting up some enthusiasm heading into next season. No matter how this season ends, it's not going to be in a national championship. But getting Tanner Morgan back healthy for next season, seeing that toughness blowout win over a top 10 Wisconsin team. Are you kidding me? It's got to be the biggest win for this Gopher program in multiple decades. Just one last look at the stats. I mean, look at Tanner Morgan coming off the injury. What a game it was for him. The run game was nowhere to be found either. Demetrius Douglas, a junior receiver, steps up this week. Rashad Bateman doing his thing. And then on the defensive side, they stepped up as well. A bunch of sacks, four sacks. A pick for James Gorgon, Gordon, our star freshman linebacker. What a day. And then we also have some good news to report on the recruiting front, really locking in a large chunk of this class. Uh, so you can see all the signings here. And then uh, as you look at the top of our list, as far as the guys we want, we're really able to focus in, uh, try to get Will Adams in here, Chris Garrison, Michael Jones is looking like a, a commit most likely, although he does have that week 13 visit at Arkansas. Uh, and then fighting for some of these guys as well, but really is looking promising for this draft, uh, not draft class, recruiting class. Looking like we're going to be able to fill out all 25 of our scholarships and actually a top 10 recruiting class right now. I don't know if that will stand because of the lack of five stars here, uh, but signing uh, a lot of good commits here, four and three star guys that were interested in the program to start uh, coming through with those commits. So at eight and three, we just have one more week against Michigan State. Looks like we're gonna wheel in a couple more of these prospects. Again, I'm gonna be changing a lot of these guys' names because of the overwhelming Patreon support from you guys, all of you guys expressing that interest to become a part of the series. So a lot of these guys' names will be changing uh, as we head into next season. So we're able to stay the course here with all of our prospects remaining here. We actually don't even have enough scholarships to sign all of these guys. I don't expect all of them to commit to us, um, but no visits to schedule. Just one last game here that we do need to simulate against Michigan State. If we can finish nine and three, let's actually take a look at our uh, conference standings and see if we're gonna be looking at a bowl game or not, or a, a, a championship game or not. It seems unlikely as Northwestern actually having a great season over there in Illinois. Wisconsin still has a better record than us, uh, despite us beating them head-to-head -head and Nebraska. So not looking like a conference championship appearance, just didn't quite pull through with those Big Ten wins mid-season without Tanner Morgan in there. Uh, but regardless, a great season. Let's finish strong uh, with Michigan State here, and then we can look ahead uh, towards our bowl and next season. And a 31-10 victory. It's going to wrap up a great regular season here in year one. Going to add another receiver here. We are going to lose David Oliver to Oregon. So the first commit that we're going to lose in a while. Entering bowl season is a top 14 team right now. Uh, we get a defensive coordinator ability to spend. My God, if we could get this in Madden would be so cool. I'm going to go with the man coverage and press coverage upgrade for defense coordinator Joe Rossi and that uh, is going to put a wrap on our regular season let's get through the conference championship round let's see who won the Heisman and get to our bowl game Will Adams is going to go to Wisconsin despite us beating them head to head oh Will I wish we could have gotten you that's a big D tackle commit we're going to lose there just one more advance here and P.J. Fleck is going to level up after a good season. And there are your Heisman finalists. C.J. Verdell of Oregon. Nice contact balance there over in the Northwest Coast is going to take home the Heisman Trophy. Trevor Lawrence finishing fifth for the award. And then a bunch of other running backs there. Uh, we got Najee Harris of Bama. What is it? Uh, Lynn J. Dixon of Clemson. Potentially an injury there to Travis Etienne. And then... Jermer Jefferson of Oregon State. So congratulations to C.J. Verdell. An excellent season there for the Ducks. And we're going to take on Ole Miss in the Outback Bowl. 
That is a good bowl game for our first season. Rashad Bateman will take home the Bolitnikov. My man, great season. Our center, Durr, is going to also win the Jim Thorpe Award. So an extremely successful first season, even showing up in some of those top awards. So we're going to do this upgrade here, and I definitely want to do the letter of intent upgrade here for our head coach, P.J. Fleck, that is going to allow us to get an extra 1,500 extra recruiting points when we get to the offseason here to try and uh, go head-to-head -head with some of these top schools for the top prospects uh, recruits that we do have remaining. For those wondering how our conference played out, Northwestern, along with us as a surprising 2020 team, going to go 11-2, and they're going to knock off Penn State and presumably play for the Rose Bowl there. Uh, so congratulations to Northwestern. Uh, some surprising teams in the Big Ten here. Penn State is going to finish second and then third for us, assuming uh, the bowl games don't shift those rankings. Uh, but this is not going to be an easy game against an SEC I don't want to say powerhouse, but very good SEC team here. A 10 and 2 Ole Miss squad. So again, we will do our uh, sort of three drive opportunities here to try and finish off what's been an excellent season for the Gophers. So it'll be the 23rd offense against the 15th offense, and our 18th ranked defense against their 42nd ranked defense. What a surprising season that it was for our defense. All of their top players coming on the Offensive side of the ball, Ely at running back, Moore at receiver, uh, and a tough right guard to worry about there. Could this be Rashad Bateman's final game as a gopher? Will he return for a senior year to try and <laughs> surprise the nation getting Tanner Morgan back next year? Can't ask for much more hype heading into a season next year. Uh, with how well this thing went, considering how many games Tanner Morgan missed. But the season is not done. We have a big game ahead. Not to say bowl games aren't meaningless here. We do want to definitely win this one, if possible. Starting off on the defensive side of the ball, and they are going to give up an opening drive touchdown. So let's hop in and try to answer that. They're going to press Bateman. You can't press the Bolitnikov. Uh, attempting to send that, but let's live to see another day here. Blitz is on there on the left side. Hit the curl. Ottman Bell, first down. Ooh, Potts has a lane. Can he get the edge? Nope, but a great run, about 19 yards, 20-yard run. Potts definitely a little more burst and explosion. Then Muhammad Ibrahim, the backup, but uh, I think we're getting both of them back for next year. Get that curl route. Bateman breaks a tackle. Look at that season. My goodness. Very well deserving of the Bolitnikov trophy. Bateman's going to get a breather on this one. Pass rushes in. Morgan, though, showing off the speed. Runs away from those D linemen. Big first down run. And the throw to the corner going to go out of bounds. Actually, not the worst case on that one. Pass rush was getting in. Good blocking. Oh, he gets caught from behind, though. A little too patient on that run from Trayson Potts. Just take the check down. Can we get the first? Douglas. They're going to give him the spot after he gets hammered. Falls forward. First down. Good blocking. Potts falls into the end zone. Great answer, Gophers. Seems fired up. So a successful answer by Morgan and the Golden Gophers. Going to see if this defense can hold up. And they do not. Another answer there by Ole Miss. Let's hop back in. Rough start for the defense. Supposed to have the advantage this week. That, what is it, 18th ranked defense? Not looking the part today. Potts 
Where are you going? Going the wrong way. He's going to lose 10 yards on the carry. Third and 20. Tanner Morgan. His hands full on this one. The pass rush coming in. He is going to get away. Can he just put it up for Bateman? He's got to work back to the football. He's almost there, but... Yikes. Just got to kind of go four verts here. It does look like they're going to bring the blitz, so... Check to a pass protection here. That's not the correct call. Apparently, you can't motion him to the left side. All right. Oh, what a throw from Morgan. Right up the seam. 26-yard completion to Jake Paulson. Just can't count these gophers out. Nice read, Seth Green, seven yard completion. You got numbers, you got numbers. Give us some good blocking. What a play call. Potts, can you make a man miss? The spin move, doesn't get him, but excellent numbers game on the left side. Sets up a 34 yard rush. Looking like a pretty even ball game right now. Seven first downs for Ole Miss, seven first downs for us. Green gets blown up there by number 13. That's the second big loss on second down this drive. Blitz is on again. Come on, Potts, get the edge. Ugh. The two yard loss. Good play by the linebacker or safety to come down, make the stop. Just gotta go back to Four verts. See what we can get. The blitz is on. They're going to leave the tight end open up the middle, but Morgan leaves that one floating over the middle. Lack of arm talent shows on that one. Unable to squeeze it up the seam. And we're going to have to settle for a field goal. Kick is good. So let's skip through the second quarter now. Defense breaks again and again. Man, this defense is falling apart against the SEC competition. This game is getting blown open. Apparently just not quite ready to handle uh, this level of competition. It's not looking good at all. And uh, I think it's time we set our sights on next season at this point. Although we are creeping back. Can we get a stop? We do get a stop, so maybe, just maybe, can complete some sort of miraculous comeback here. Oh, the pressure gets in. Can we get to the outside? We do. Morgan hits Ottman Bell. Good play. Let's go hurry up. Go, go, go. Plenty of time for college football to make a comeback. Clock stops after a first down. Bateman, way to fight for it. It's a good looking drive right here. If uh, the defense can come up with a stop in simulation, we might have to hop in and just see if we can't lead some kind of miraculous comeback here. It's pretty unlikely, but I guess you never know. Looks like the tight end's going to come open. Morgan, a beautiful throw to complete a hell of a drive. Gets hit after the throw. It doesn't matter. So let's see if the defense can't come up with a stop. And nope, this defense just gets absolutely manhandled by the Southern boys of Ole Miss. 63 points. Nothing we could have done. Going to drop the bowl game, but a great season nonetheless. Disappointing end for the defense that was 
a big part of our success this year. But I don't think that's going to derail any of the motivation that this team has uh, to come out and really prove people wrong next year. Uh, we're going to have uh, a big potential loss in Rashad Bateman. We'll see what he decides to do. Uh, the Blitnikoff winner, Tanner Morgan, knows that that was a season that got away from him a little bit. The turf toe injury, but next year it's going to be a big one. His senior season. He's got hopes for not just a national championship, but potentially NFL hopes on the horizons for Tanner Morgan as well. So that's going to do it for this season. Just a recap on our season stats before we get to the offseason. Uh, the offseason not going to take quite as long as, say, a Madden rebuild. So we should be able to get through uh, the offseason and set up uh, the start of next season for next episode. So Tanner Morgan, a really good year when he was in there. 316 yards per game. Uh, definitely high hopes for his return next year. Uh, Muhammad Ibrahim uh, and Trayson Potts actually setting up to be a dynamic running back duo. Potts played valiantly in his uh, filling in for Ibrahim. Uh, so excited to get those running backs back. And then, of course, the, the receiving room. If we can get Rashad Bateman back, if he decides not to declare uh, and come back and help this team compete for a national championship, uh, our top three receivers are all juniors. Uh, and our tight end. So, man, this, this offense has crazy potential for next season. Uh, even some of our top linemen here uh, with Andres, Falele, Schmitz, our center, uh, who wins that award this year. Uh, although, actually, I thought it was someone else that won the center. That's kind of peculiar to me. I'll have to go check that. And then even on defense, returning our sack leaders, James Gordon was outstanding at outside linebacker. Oh, it was the cornerback, not center. Coney Durr wins the top corner award. Excellent season for him. Expect him to have uh, draft prospects there for him. But still getting some impact players back on defense as well. Obviously some work to do on that side of the ball based on how Ole Miss stuck it to us. Uh, so here we go into the offseason. First things first is going to be the moment of truth. Players leaving. And Rashad Bateman, a man of the people, returning to help accomplish the ultimate goal of a national championship. That is big time. Uh, Muhammad Ibrahim is declaring a sixth round. By rule, anyone rounds one through three, we are allowed to try to get to come back. And I want to guarantee a conference championship because I think that we can accomplish that this season. We've got some people wanting to leave. Uh, that's actually going to suck. Both these guys uh, have a lot of promise for the future of this team. Let's We can't make any promises to this quarterback, honestly. Uh, so we're going to have to just let him go, stay honest there. And then this defensive tackle, uh, that's that's tough. I mean, we can promise him to play in three or more games, but I don't think he's going to like it. Uh, he's going to leave. So we do have some tough transfers, but we are going to get uh, Ibrahim back to complete the offensive mission here to have one of the top units in college football next season. Next up, we get to see if we get any transfers in here. No, I did not expect that. So on to recruiting. I do need to highlight our amazing Patreon prospects for the series here. So Liam Hyde uh, out there in Seattle is going to be going to the University of Oregon. Good luck, Liam. Julian Knoll, aren't you cool? Going to be going to the Ohio State University from Denver. A big body tight end. We might get to see you uh, should we make the Big Ten Championship. Jake Rosen, not quite committed out there in New York, but going to be heading to either Michigan or Syracuse. Again, it would be cool to see you come to the Big Ten, Jake. Matt Little, again, uh, going to be coming to Michigan. Brandon Cosby, heading down to South Carolina. See if you can take a starting job down there any of these years. Good luck. Sean is going to be a Gator. Five-star. Good luck, Sean. And then Avery Collins, uh, going to surprise some people and go to Middle Tennessee State after Ohio State showed some interest. Uh, that was a good find for Middle Tennessee State. Avery, I'm sure you're going to thrive down there. Might even start right away. 
And then the two of you that we were able to target, Yannick has not quite made his decision, hoping to pull him in here. And then Shea Zupnik did commit to our lovely University of Minnesota. So we have 11,500 points to spend. I really do think Yannick is going to be a big piece of the future considering we missed out on that D-tackle to Wisconsin. So I want to pump a bunch of points into him. Uh, probably about 6,500. Hope that's enough. And then the rest of these are pretty tight. Uh, tough decisions to make here. I really do feel like it's best to... Uh, just to pick uh, pick a couple guys at this stage that you really don't want to lose and go after them. Uh, might actually be worth it to finish the scouting here on Brad Davis. Oh, he is a gem. So maybe we should pour it in for him uh, to complete the offensive line recruiting here. And then we will let these guys kind of go. Uh, especially Garrison, Paul Smith. Pretty unrealistic to come back on them. And then uh, Michael Jones out of New Jersey. Uh, we are top on his board. Uh, maybe we put a couple hundred in there just in case Arkansas doesn't come very heavy for him. But if we don't get him, it's not the end of the world. So advancing to the moment of the truth, signing day. And we get the top two guys we wanted, Brad Davis and Yannick, to the program. So we are going to finish with the 12th overall class. Not bad for the 18th team in the nation. Our prestige is going to go up. Man, this is building up some hype. We are turning the Gophers into a household name. PJ Fleck uh, started it in 2019, doing it again here 2020. So a good-looking class. Uh, and again, for all of my patrons out there that filled out the spreadsheet to become a player in this uh, series, I'm going to start from the bottom. Of that list, if you got on late, you will be becoming uh, one of these players. Obviously not uh, Shea or uh, Yannick, but the rest of you guys will be filling in here as prospects where I see appropriate. I'm going to try to get you as the positions uh, that you needed. But honestly, just so many of you guys, too many to highlight throughout this series. It would just take up too much time. I find it more important that I get all of you involved. Uh, so if you're at the bottom of that list, you're going to see... Uh, your name starting to pop up uh, in the rosters and maybe even getting on the field. I'm going to do my best to give all of you guys uh, the cadence that you deserve, but uh, some of you probably won't make it fully integrated into the uh, narrative here. And then if you're more towards the top of that spreadsheet, I'm going to try to get you in as recruits again and stick with the way we've been doing that. So I'm just going to highlight any position changes that make sense here. We're actually going to slide... Brad Davis into guard for now. That could change in the future, but we've got a sophomore here, six foot seven, uh, who is going to be a better right tackle for a while. Uh, Brad Davis kick inside there, potentially overtake Curtis Dunlap's spot there. And then actually going to do the same thing with Richard Coe, uh, moving him to left guard. We have a six foot seven freshman uh, who's going to be ready uh, to play there at left guard, uh, left tackle rather. So we're set up for a while now with the offensive line really just need a young center i'm actually going to kick chris walker over to free safety here it's a position with newbin as a, a junior we're going to need to look down the road a little bit a little bit more on the stiff side he's also the best tackler of the three that we got you can see he's actually going to go up as a free safety uh, so zupnik uh, Joseph and then we got some youth down here so I think that's actually going to be best long term uh, and Walker could actually probably start there at free safety uh, looking like a rock there and maybe we actually uh, would be better to kick Newbin over to strong safety uh, and put Howden as the third safety not quite as good of an overall but he's actually going to go down as a strong safety but that's 79 speed, I think that's that's the right call. He fits more of that mold of a strong safety. So we're going to kick him over there, and I'm actually going to start uh, whoever becomes Chris Walker in the next episode out of our patrons. So we're going to wrap this episode up just kind of going through the training here. Uh, probably my least favorite part of this game is the training system is very linear. Uh, moves a little bit, but for the most part, you know what to expect. Uh, so just one last look at the roster here. Uh, before we get out of here but again guys thank you so much for really letting me know how much you enjoy this series uh, the view count just has not been where i was hoping it would be which is unfortunate uh, but i appreciate you guys letting me know how much you enjoy the series hitting that like button share it 
in the places that you think uh, could help really grow this series. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope to go as, as long as I can here, as long as it makes sense for me to do it. Definitely going to have another fun season ahead of us, and then maybe we'll reassess potentially taking it over to TFG Plays, my second account, uh, account or something like that. But uh, that is very much not decided at the moment. I just want to thank all of you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and we'll see you for the next one. Cheers, guys. We'll see you later.